Welcome back, friends. I'm Metal7. This is Football Manager 2018, and we are back for my 100th AC Ajaccio game. Popular head coach Melo7 will celebrate his 100th game in charge of Athletic Club Ajaccio when his side play Stade de Reims in the Coupe de la Ligue on Wednesday. The AC Ajaccio performing miracles in the league. Seven will want to ensure that his players ignore the landmark and turn their attention to the game. Melo7 was born in Salinas, California. Close enough. On September 13, 1973, Seven's AC Ajaccio team lifted the League Two in 2025. Seven has shown a pre preference for younger talent during his time at AC Ajaccio, with the average age of player brought in standing at just 22. That has more, I think, to do with our, our director of youth football playing such a dramatic role in uh, recruiting players of the future than, than what I've actually brought in. Seven's first non-playing role was as China's under-23s head coach, a position he held from June 2017 until January of 2018. Between January 2018 and June 2022, Seven also had brief spells with Lin Top, foot, uh, top Football. <sighs> Vether, we're not going to try the Natty's Pirineuf Liblib Vether. And Rux Chorzuf. Seven also had a brief spell in charge of HB Cura between... June 2022 and June 2024, Seven's HB Cura team lifted the Nordic Beck Liga in 2023. Seven then moved on to become head coach at AC Ajaccio. Seven's AC Ajaccio team then lifted the League Two in 2025. Seven then opted to be also become head coach at USA, has earned the recognition of the from soccer community for his achievement. Shortlisted for Danish head coach of the year, won the League Two head coach of the year, League Two head coach of the year, and... I guess that's the same thing twice, and shortlisted for the League One Conforma head coach of the season. So, I'm good. <laughs> Let's prove that wrong. All right, you've missed two games since I've been away. Uh, and uh, they're kind of a, a mixed bag. We had a, a, a hard-fought match here against uh, St. Etienne. You can see they had a goal in the 70th minute to cap off the victory. Um, just a good, solid match. Uh, fairly defensive. Um, not a lot of shots on either side. We fouled way too much, and that that's kind of kind of the story. It was a good match against a good team. I think they were ranked fifth or sixth at the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had the chances created. We had chances. We just couldn't quite get anything to happen. So, um. We take it. I mean, two good teams canceling each other out, except they didn't cancel each other out. They beat us. Uh, we followed this up with a match against Angers. Now, it says 6-4. This game should not have been 6-4. This game should have been like 7-2. Um, I mean, you can see here, it should have been a domination. And then you can see here, let's let's go ahead and watch the, uh, the goals anyway. Uh, this game was a frustrating match for me. Um, it just... Oh, it was just, we played terribly. We played terribly. So Nen is very good, by the way. He puts it in, and Simon just puts it past Shakarov. Wasn't a particularly hard shot. He just decided heck with it. Um, we do come back fairly quickly, though. Pikachu with a spectacular shot. First touch. I mean, that was a hell of a goal for anybody, but a defensive center is spectacular. Unfortunately, that's the only good our defensive centers did. Nen puts that one in. At least one of his goals, I don't remember which one, was was he was clearly a step offside. But then we get a penalty kick. So so we bring it back in. And then again, he's so good. He's so hot right now. That's the one he was offside. He was, he's, he was a good step past uh, when that one came in. But you know what? We come back again. I mean, you can see at the top of the screen just how quick and fast these goals came. Hernandez, we'd switched him over to the right at this point uh, and just – it was beautiful. We we tried the youngster, uh, one of the youngsters on the right, put Hernandez on the left. Uh, Perez gets a penalty shot of his own. Our defense, like I say, was just terrible that day. Um, at this point, we've uh, we've taken up Mueller, who played a 5.8. Hernandez to T Bone to, to T Bone. T Bone was just he was he was brilliant. He got three goals. He single handedly saved us from this once he went in. Uh, Nikolov wasn't good. He's the one that gave up that penalty shot uh, again. T Bone puts it away. Um, yeah, it was, you can see at the top what a crazy game this thing was. And then we get a, we get an insurance one here to pull up by two. Painberg into Fair, manages to get that one in. Fair had a, an opportunity like two feet in front of the net where 
the goalkeeper's here. The whole rest of the net's available. So he put it off the goalkeeper, got the rebound, put it off the goalkeeper. Mueller had a few like that as well, which is why he played a 5-8. So, um, yeah, it was – it was it just wasn't good. <laughs> Shakarov played okay. Their goalkeeper actually played very well. His positioning was excellent. Uh, you can't really fault him for the six goals, to be honest. I don't believe. He, he kept a lot more – he probably kept – probably four or five goals out with good positioning. Um, you can see their goal, their defense was also a bit shocking, but um, I mean, yeah, it was just Simon was in initially and, uh, and the first half Nikolov was like a six, four and Simon was a six, five. And I, I decided that because Simon plays in the middle of that group of three, that I'd take him out and put Suleiman who'd been injured uh, and he'd just kind of come back the day before, and they said he was capable but should be monitored, which is why he wasn't starting. So we brought him in. He played okay, enough to kind of solidify the line a little bit and bring up uh, Nikolov. Pikachu only has that because he scored a goal. Um, our midfield played okay as well, uh, despite the fact that Fair missed. You know, he got a goal, but he missed a couple other pretty easy ones. Um we played well on the wings. Uh, Painberg played obviously excellent. Hernandez played great once we got things going. But to do that, we had to get rid of um, Bouchard, who played a 6-3, and Mueller, who played a 5-8. Once they were out and Hernandez had people that were actually playing around him, all of a sudden, you know, he just kept creating. Just nobody could do anything until we got we got T-Bone in. So that one was a work. That that one was a game. It's funny because there's the – there's the um, quickly play game or whatever it called button up there. And uh, Loki was talking about that and he's like, oh, why would anybody ever push that? I mean, we play the game to play the game. But but the reality is your games are usually won or lost before you hit play. They're, they're, they're won or lost in between the games. The game is just a visual representation of how you did in the week previous or the season previous. Um, very rarely do we as managers <laughs> affect the game positively within the game, as far as I can tell. Our work is really done ahead of time. Um, you put the best players in the position to win and you send them out there. They're out there because in theory, they're the best players there. So your subs usually aren't going to have a huge impact. Maybe you have that one good super sub and everybody knows when he's going on and those roles are fairly well defined. Um, this was one of those games where I had to work the entire game to try to get a positive result. And uh, clearly I screwed up in the week previous uh, you know, and we weren't running our best team out there, partly due to injuries, partly just due to trying to, to, to try some new guys out and see what they got. But it was some of our key guys, the guys that were going to start no matter what that let us down, like Mueller with his five, eight there. So did penal, uh, uh, find him for a week and he accepted it. Um, other news, we have a one transfer, um, kind of of note, I guess we trade Flavius here. Uh, an offer came in, Bodasani wants him. And uh, so we're going to send him, I assume they're Italian. Sure. R oh, uh, Romain. Romania. Um, so, no, we're not sending him back. <laughs> but they want him, uh, and he's frankly not – he's he's solid um, for League Two. For League One, he's he's a bit underpowered. He was just going to be on the reserve team. So we went ahead and did that. Um, otherwise, I can't think of a whole lot else going on. This is kind of what I have set up at the moment. But I've got one important change I think I want to make. Because our defense has been, frankly, not spectacular. 6-7-6, six, 6-9-3-6. Six, 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 those aren't bad. I mean, that's almost a 7. It's, it's slightly better than average. But defense has clearly been our weakness. Um, and it's young. It's a very young defense. I want to make it slightly older and a little bit different. Uh, Killian Niveau here, I think I want to move him into the center. He's got a 19 strength, 18 jumping reach, good balance of 15. Teamwork is 16. His positioning is okay. Um, heading is 13. Marking is 14. Tackling is 12. And his ex acceleration and pace, 11 and 12. So he's not the fastest player. Um, and he can play either foot as well. I want to make him our center defensive center. And I think I'm going to start that 
process right now. Um, we have Pascal here that we can bring in on the left. And he looks pretty good. He's got great first touch. He's a little bit faster. His physicals are very good. His positioning is worse, nine, um, but his crossing is 14. So he's more of an offensive winger than a defensive winger. Uh, to, I mean, that's that's just what it is. Um, we could also bring in Lenzini, um, who has been complaining about not having enough game time. But Lenzini's a weird player. If we take a look at overall, it says 123 and 130 versus, say, Pascal of 111 and 119. So Lenzini has a higher cap and a pretty good lead right now in current ability. But this is one of those things where I say you can't get caught up on that number um, because if we compare um, Lenzini and Pascal, we see that the only thing Lenzini has a has a boost on is defense. And Pascal crushes him in aerial, technical, vision, ties him in attacking and speed, and is a little bit better in physical. So even though the overall number looks better for Lenzini, clearly Pascal is, is the better player here. So uh, I really, you know, I mean, whoops, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, let me, let's try that again. Let's go um, Pascal, compare with, whoops, not with the USA, with Lenzini, and let's look at attributes. This is what I'm trying to look at here. I mean, you can just see technically he crushes him on everything. You know, the difference is uh, better concentration, better work rate. And I do really like better work rate. I, I think it's a, it's a great skill, especially for guys out there on, on the wing. They have to do some running, uh, even more so if they're a fullback, because they really have to get back. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you know, but determination is better. So I think determination and work rate, they kind of cancel each other out. Don't really care about flair one way or the other. It's 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 nice to have a little creativity for that guy who's supposed to be creating chances. Um, but 10 isn't spectacular, either, but five is pretty horrible. So, you know, and there's no red at all for Pascal. And we do have some horrible bits in Lenzini's. And, and, and while Lenzini's strength is his physicals, I would say, with the 17 stamina, 16 strength, and 14 pace, and a 15 agility, too, he has a few that are just average, whereas everything Lenzini has is above average to great. So... Or, I mean, uh, Pascal does. So I think what we do is, I think we're going to go ahead, we're going to start training Mr. Uh, uh, Nouveau here right now as a defensive center. And we're going to go training, if I can find it, position, role, defensive center, and we're going to say ball playing defender. And uh, I'm going to throw him in. Uh, this is probably a mistake. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really sure who I... This is an important game. I think I'm going to take Ivo out, and Ivo is going to become – I know it says key player there, and he probably will still continue to be a key player. Uh, let's let's do a quick comparison with him. Let's do compare with um, – well, first let's start with Killian. Let's go here. Uh, so Killian's in the blue this time. You know, the only thing Ivo has on him is speed. Really. I mean, that's it. And uh, let's try, uh, how about let's go with Suleiman, uh, who's in theory our worst, but I like that important matches. I like Pikachu. Pikachu actually has played well for us. Let's compare him with uh, Mr. Killian. Um, a little bit closer, um, but Killian's still better at almost everything. Not quite as good at attacking, and he's 13 versus 14 at defending. Uh, okay, well, we got one more player, Suleiman. Compare with Killian. And uh, they're very similar players, but Killian is clearly better. He's just better. And, you know, he doesn't fall down on anything. So I, I think this is the way to go. And maybe Suleiman's the player that comes out long term. But I think for today, it's going to be uh, Ivo. And we're going we're gonna to flop those right there. We're going to put that spectacular. And he also likes important matches. Look at that. If we could put that in the backfield every day for, for big games, that would be spectacular. Um, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and take Ivo out. And we're going to put Pascal in there. And I think that's what we're going to go with. And I, that's my plan, I think, going forward. Um, like I say, I think ultimately Ivo replaces Suleiman in there, uh, despite Suleiman's spectacular name. 
Um, and then we use Suleiman as our kind of our big game sub. You know, when things are going wrong, we can throw him in there and know he can handle it. Uh, and that's that's kind of my plan for the moment. Um, and yeah, I don't really see. Uh, we're gonna give T Bone a, a match here because he earned it with his three. Go oh, look at that, seven goals, <laughs> seven goals in ten appearances, seven goals in nine appearances, uh, five goals for Tebow here in two starts and six sub appearances, um, but three in that last game. So we're gonna give him a shot. Uh, we do have Axel here. He's also just coming back from an injury. He's got two goals and assist, um, but he creates chances. One point six eight. But you know, so does Tebow. 1.65. So we're going to go with this for now. Match preview. Um, we're not in my favorite uniform. It's okay. Uh, this is kind of... Oh, and Bonet's in because uh, Fair is uh, suspended for the game for yellows. Uh, oh, the last game, they also had a guy sent off for two yellows there in the vast... There towards the end. It was a, it was kind of a weak foul in the box, and they sent him home in like the 85th minute. So he got out of, you know, 10 minutes earlier than everybody else to go get a shower. Um, that game was just crazy. So yeah, so Bonet's in. A uh, quick look at him because we haven't seen a lot of John Jan Yves Bonet, um, but I think he's going to be pretty good. Um, you know, physicals are really good as long as you don't want him to jump. He's not particularly brave, but I think for out here in the midfield, good teamwork, great vision, spectacular technique. Uh, he's probably our center back of the or our center midfielder of the future, um, and we really probably do need to get him more games. Uh, it's just fair and Painberg have been so good. Um, it's just been hard to get rid of them. Uh, so we do need to win this. This is a cup match, and we are supposed to make it to the fourth, and I believe this is the third. Uh, it is against Reims, who is a League Un team, so this is um, this is anything but a gimme. Uh, they haven't had a spectacular season so far, uh, but again, it's it's League One, so you know, and it appears we are in their stadium, and um, yeah, we put Pascal in, and he instantly fouls somebody. Maybe a little bit nervous. It's okay. Let's see if we can we can withstand the pressure here. Perrin goes back. This will be our first opportunity to see our new kind of quasi-defensive line. That was beautiful. Bonet unable to quite get there. Beautiful little kind of pass out of the air. Willert feeds that one back across. Oh, beautiful tackle there. Can we get the attack? Mueller's on it. He gets it up to Hernandez. Hernandez is going to... Oh, he goes in towards the center. That's not typical of him he usually goes back out right but I guess with Mueller behind him so far he decided he'd cut it in uh did not work out well for us there we go good save by Shakarov defense did a good job of pushing him wide limiting his options and he took a bad shot Ooh, okay Pikachu's got that one gets it all the way up to T-Bone T-Bone boots it way up for Hernandez now this time he's going to go for the right corner probably try to get it back towards Mueller who's charging in Oh, he goes all the way far side to Legal, who tries to get a header back in, but it goes over the net. That's a little bit more typical of the Hernandez we know and love. Hernandez and Mueller have been very good if we take out that last game for Mueller for the season. All right. Amory gets that one in. Uh, Virechkin, maybe? Amrain? Virechkin? Virechkin, maybe? Oh, beautiful shot. Of oh, there might have been a penalty there. Yeah, yeah, They're, they they probably deserve that one. El Tigre took somebody down. Verikin. We're going to go Verikin. Are V's V's in Dutch? I don't know. It's probably Fair Eken, right? Probably more likely to be pronounced as an F. And we're down. Penalty shot early. Um, they've clearly wanted this one more. I, it, it's probably too early, but I'm going to throw a demand more out right now. Let's see if we can get something going. Uh, you know, so far we've, we've, we've created bad fouls, bad penalties, and we haven't really created a whole lot. We've, we've had a little bit of opportunity. Um, we just haven't... We're, we're half a step off, and I would say that's probably us for the last few games. And maybe it's just us playing closer to our level. Maybe maybe this is our normal spot. T-Bone's got it. He's out there at the corner. Can he feed one across? Mueller's there. Yes, that's what we need. We need Mueller to put those away. He was unable to do that in the little corner. 
of the Jot Seal fans that have made it to uh, to Reims here for this match go crazy. Beautiful. Unable to get the header out. It just kind of goes a little off, and Mueller steps through three guys. As cool as the other side of the pillow. Puts that one away. Oh, Perrin manages to just steal that from us. That was beautiful. Gets it up to Omri. His attacker uh, was way off sides, but Omri manages to get back on side. Nouveau was there, oh, but his tackle away, unfortunately, goes right to Willard. Or somebody. Omri, maybe. It was a nice attempt, but that was one of those things where the brilliant tackle becomes a spectacular pass to the wrong guy. Oh, maybe it was a pass all along. Maybe maybe Willard was getting rid of it. He felt the pressure, fed it off to the side. I think it's just a brilliant pass. That's what I'm going to go with. Well done by Reams. This is this is a tough match for us. We're not doing well here. Um, like again, this is our third match in a row where we have we have clearly not been the better team in the first half. The question is, can we make an adjustment? Oh, look at that tackle. That was nice. Who, who was that there? Agree. Oh, we just let Perrin pass. Oh, Pascal, that lack of defense is hurting us out there today. He is getting abused out there. That was a nice tackle, but okay, man. Yep, he's got. He's on his guy, but he just lets him. He just kind of lets him sneak behind him. Stops paying attention. Walks past him and lets him go. Yep. We just, we're not putting up shots and we're not defending well. Let's see. Can Pascal kind of make up a little bit here with the, the cross? There we go. He gets the cross in for Hernandez. And we're back in this 3 2. Man, we've been playing some exciting matches lately. So he's trying to make up for it with a little offense. Beautiful cross in. We will take it. What's his overall. Uh, 6.8 with the assist, but the bad defense. Uh, Jean Benet and uh, Payne Bang are not playing spectacular there in the center. This is probably the weakest we've seen our midfield with six sevens in a while. Nouveau is just having a shocker at five nine, but we're gonna we're gonna seven him out. <laughs> Actually, uh, we're gonna keep playing him there off and on, but we need this match. So I think we're gonna go dressing room. Uh, performance was disappointing I think we can go with that and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually put him in for uh, for for Pascal who's got the yellow and then we'll go ahead we'll put um, Ivo back in Ivo will swap with Suleiman and we'll go with that <clears throat> and I think that's gonna be the change we make this time but we're gonna keep playing him in the center there because the stats say he should be a spectacular defensive center and we're just going to go with it. And we're going to give him a chance here to work his way out of that 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 fine. Because a 5-8 at the moment is a week's fine. And we did it. We, we, we find Mueller last week. So we've shown we'll, we'll find our stars. So we need, to, we need him to work his way out of that. Um, he's up to 5-9. If we can get up to a 6, it's just a, just a stern talking to. Uh, but we'll put him back in a now. Oh, back down to 5-8. He clearly doesn't. He clearly doesn't want that week's wages, but he is going to play there going forward. I mean, that's that's just what it's going to be. Mueller. Oh my God, Mueller! What a rocket! That's like my old uh, when I when I used to golf uh, in high school. I was on the golf team and I had a hell of a drive, but it only went you know this far off the ground. I called it a worm burner. And that was a worm burner. Just so much on it, and it just doesn't rise at all. Just slots it in there right off the grass. It probably left a scorch mark. And it's tied up 3-3. Let's see, can we sneak out? Of, can, we get, can we get a victory in this one? You know, we, we've managed to, to stay in it. You know, they get something, we get something. You know, we did, we did give up two in a row, but now we've got back. We've, we've crawled back for two in a row. Nouveau feeds that one back to Shakarov. He was a little bit lackadaisical in grabbing that. I wish he would have just stepped up and taken it. But Nouveau, all right, what do you got? 
Beautiful shot up. We've got T-Bone there. We've got guys charging in the middle. Can he find Mueller for the next one? Mueller with the header to the top corner. Yes, goal, Ajaccio. And we are back on top. Well, not back on top. We're on top for the first time. 4-3 AC Ajaccio. The athletic club is on a little bit of a run here. We've got three goals in a row, two in a couple minutes here. Mueller with a spectacular uh, header into the back corner with a little bit of emphasis. And Mueller is back after his 5-8 with a hat trick. Niveau's out of the penalty top area up to 6.1. We'll probably let him sneak out of that. You know, we, it was 6-4 now. Um, we've put him at a position he's comfortable in. Team's going well. I think we go ahead and maybe throw out a concentrate at this time. A little cheeky calm concentrate since we talked about Loki earlier. Um, and and let's see what we go. Niveau, he's over there now. Oh, no, that's terrible. That's terrible. Oh, my gosh, he goes off the top. Luckily for us, the crossbar was playing spectacular defense today, and we're on the counterattack. Mueller tries to get it over. Oh, oh, a little bit of a little bit of a trip there. Uh, yeah, that was... Mm, that wasn't good. Um, I, it'd be nice to put uh, Grossboy in, but, man, I mean, everybody's playing well right now. I think we just kind of live it. T-Bone gets it out, uh, get it into the middle. And it got shipped up to Hernandez, who was unable to get onto that. Uh, Villert's back in. LaCroix, beautiful cross in, or pass into Omrain, but he puts it up high. He had pressure on him. He had a little bit of a window, but he didn't have time to think about that. Uh, and we're able to kind of force that one out. Uh, we've come back into this shots-wise, 12 versus 18. They're still up on us a little bit, but it's definitely been a much more even half as far as shots go. And, and chances-wise, uh, we've, we've definitely edged it. Our defense has solidified a little bit now that we're back to our standard defensive alignment, so to speak. T-Bone gets that one up to Mueller. He's got Hernandez. Can he get it? No, no, back to Payne Bang. He tries to go out to the left corner to T-Bone. He's got guys in the middle. Puts the cross up. Hernandez got taken down in the box. That's going to be us. Clearly taken down. May have been a little bit extra emphasis on this. Looked like he did a little bit of a somersault afterwards. Hernandez. Can he get a second goal here for the... Does he have a goal so far this game? I know he's got some assists. Oh, no! No, but kick it! It landed right at your feet. How did you not kick that? Oh, my God. That should have been another goal. Hernandez. Oh, well, we won. That's match. Oh, two. Two spectacular, exciting matches in a row. Um, oh, my God. Wow. Killian, 5-9 in the first half. Redeems himself with a 6.8 for the full match. That's a little bit of, a, of an average to bring up. He did really well. And we can see Allen did the same thing, 6.3 to 6.8. Defense in general did well. Ivo stepped in and did a 7-0 for the second half. He played great. Shakarov a 7-1 overall. 7-4, 7-2. That's more like what we're looking for out of our midfield. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think we can... Uh, I think we can say that that turned out pretty well. I don't think anybody needs a stern talking to, and we're going to roll through, and that should get us to the fourth round, which is what we were expected to do. What do they say about that? AC Ajaccio beat Reams in a thrilling encounter, 4-3 goal fest. After our 6-4 game before that, uh, we win our Coupe de la Ligue third round. Um, Ligue 1 team club have merely lived up to pre-competition expectations. Uh, and and that's that's it. Uh, second week in a row, I believe my pep talk was the um, was the deal. Is there one back here? Did it tell us that back here too? Post match, the goal was spectacular. Pikachu credits head coach talk. So two weeks in a row, my head coach talk has done the job. Uh, Mueller stars as AC scrapes win, and he got the hat trick after last week. So clearly, clearly our little penalty stern talking to last week was was enough to turn him around. Um, oh, hey, he's watching watching his guy there, Yaya, uh, was casting an eye over Mohammed Omri. Um, so yeah, let's let's take a quick look here, real fast, and see how see how things look. Um, goal wise, now ten goals for Mueller. Should be nine for Hernandez. I still can't believe he didn't finish that one off, but eight for him, five for T-Bone, and five assists. Six assists for Hernandez, five for Mueller. Look at that. Our front three, our front four are doing work. Um, 
Axel seems to be the guy falling down here, though. He might be out of this for a little while. You know, he's had eight apparent, eight starts and one sub. He's got two goals and an assist. He does have key passes, but you know what? In less play, Tebow has almost as many. He doesn't have the headers, but he's creating more chances as well. So we might we might stick with this for the time being, but I think we are going to stick with Niveau here in the middle, except I think we're going to take Suleiman out. We're going to put Ivo on the side there, and then Suleiman will come in. I think that's how that's going to work. And we've got all those key, we've got way too many key players on this team. That's that's a problem, if you ask me. Uh, and Ferrer's back, so he could come back in as a key player for Jan Yves here, um, who will be in for there. Uh, Marco Bouchard. I don't know. Something. We probably don't need Suleiman and Mateo in both. So, I'll <clears throat> well, I mean, we've got three guys there. So we've got three, two defensive centers, defensive right, defensive left, and then three guys that can play mid-center or striker. That's probably fair. That, that actually, yeah. Um, of those, I would say at the moment, Bouchard... I don't I don't have a good feel on him because his numbers look great. I think he should be spectacular already at this level. Uh, you know, dribbling, finishing, first touch, free kick, uh, and heading. Technique's a little bit low. Composure's a little bit low. Is that is that the difference here? Um his off the ball's okay, but his anticipation's not great. I, I'm not really sure where where he falls down a little bit. Clearly he's more of a striker than a uh a midfield player at all. <clears throat> Does he have any sort of crossing? And eh, nope, nope, he doesn't. Um, so yeah, he's a striker. I think we can kind of ignore the rest. Whereas Axel can can play in a lot of positions. <clears throat> but uh yeah, I would say this is our mid center, and these are primarily striker options. But I think that's fine. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Cheers.